Welcome everybody to this week, a double dip. That's right, a double header for the start of your brand new high school football season in the Chagrin Valley Conference. The CBC, it's a CBC TV game of the week, edition one. And here at the beautiful in Riccardi Stadium inside Joslin Field, Conneaut, Ohio is where we are this evening, a matchup between the Conneaut Spartans and the Grand Valley Mustangs, a cross-divisional CBC matchup, of course, Conneaut entering the CBC for the very first time joining the Lake Division this year uh, with Jefferson and Madison High Schools. On the other side, of course, Grand Valley, a veteran of the conference, one and five in division play last year in the Tough Valley Division. Again, of course, uh, a lot of folks in there, maybe one you may remember, Kirtland in that division, moving back from the Chagrin Division after dominating it last season. As the rain begins to fall here at Riccardi Stadium inside Joslin Field. Uh, showers expected in the forecast for your game tonight, folks. Uh, kind of starting, as we just mentioned here, just five minutes or so before kickoff and expected to last, honestly, throughout the majority of the game. Natural grass field down there. It is going to be a fun game to watch, of course. Our inaugural game back for the new season of high school football. So... Who are the Conneaut Spartans? Well, let's break them down just a bit. Eight and three last season as an independent, playing a lot of the teams over on the other side of the Ohio-Pennsylvania border, but now moving into the conference, as we mentioned earlier here in the broadcast, and Coach Rocco Dobrin again saying that it's kind of refreshing uh, to be in an Ohio conference as well. Of course, trying to get into the Ohio playoffs as an independent was a bit tough and challenging, but happy to be welcomed into the CVC, one of the teams that pushed for and Connie had to get into this division and into this conference was, well, Grand Valley, believe it or not. In talking with head coach Clint Nims uh, earlier this week and before the game today, he said he's re it's refreshing to see Connie as an opponent on the schedule and a conference opponent as well. Of course, different divisions inside the conference, but you get the drift there with that. And uh, as for Grand Valley visiting today, again, a uh, bit of a struggle, as we mentioned last season, one in five in division play. And then, of course, Coach Nims telling me that uh, really it's about kind of learning from the close games. A lot of close calls last season for the Grand Valley Mustangs. And going to rely on some key players uh, for Grand Valley this time around. Of course, the big one being Sammy Goforth, a junior quarterback, 5'11". Again, uh, number seven on the field you'll see tonight, whipping the ball around and running as well. Got Hurts during the season last year in his sophomore year, but did get some valuable experience, and Coach Dims is impressed with what he's seen at this point, obviously, through training camp, the preseason, and now getting ready after the scrimmages and all the two-a-days and the extra work for this first regular season game against a familiar foe. Of course, Conneaut and Grand Valley do play each other relatively often, according to Coach Dims, as well as having to scrimmage each other pretty much every season, and they have a good relationship to the two head coaches do, so looking forward to see how that matchup goes in. Uh, now with uh, actually being conference opponents with that, along with uh, Sammy Goforth, also looking out for Robert Rogers. He's an All-Ohio player uh, back in the receiving core. Coach Nim tells me it's going to be a bit different this time around for big number 11. He's going to be carrying the ball too, getting more involved in the offense. It's going to be fun to watch and see what Robert Rogers is able to do with that. 
Also looking at John Foss Peters, the defensive end running the football as well. The junior 5'9 tailback and defensive back. As Kanya takes the field two and a half minutes before game time here on CBC TV. It is the first half of a doubleheader. Again, of matchups this week, we're covering four. You, of course, tomorrow going to be in Beachwood as Beachwood and Orange. First game of the season, one and a half a rivalry game. We'll do that tomorrow night, but of course, a big game starting tonight here first. Again, in beautiful Conneaut, Ohio. And if you're wondering who the voice you're hearing is, of course, my name is Kyle Cornell. I'm actually your new play-by-play -play voice for the upcoming season for CBC TV. So happy to be with you, folks. You're going to be joined tomorrow night by Double A Anthony Alford, maybe him on 92.3 The Fan as well. We're going to be covering the game tomorrow night. Uh, solo for me tonight, but excited to be out in Kanye for the very first time as a CVC team to see what they do against a seasoned pro in Grand Valley in this conference. Uh, as for Kanye, who's going to stand out for them? Well, it's a strong senior class. You may even see them on the field now in those blue uniforms, looking like a uh, slight gray to gold trim with the numbers, white helmets. Of course, you have the Grand Valley Mustangs walking across the field in those white uniforms, blue numbers, white helmet with the blue stripe up top for those Conneaut against Spartans today. Senior class, big deal for a coach. Again, Rocco Dobrin, he tells me the Max Gleason senior quarterback. He's got wheels, folks. He's going to be all over the field. Number again, seven uh, for Connie Yacht. Also going to play both ways. So we're going to see him do a little bit on the defensive end as well. Uh, other people to watch out for, especially on the defensive side. Look out for Ty Coville today. Again, he's a running back and a linebacker for Conneaut Senior as well. 5'10", 175 pound Mack truck. Last season as a junior actually broke the team record for tackles, if you can believe that. And he was a junior. Now he's got a full senior season to come out here and lay down the wood on the field. Looking forward to see Ty go out there and dominate as well. Also Bruce Spur or Bryce Sperlin, I should say. Again, will make an impact on the defensive then look out for Wyatt Payne. He was actually an Ohio honorable mention, and he's a running back number six, also a senior. You're catching a trend here, folks. All seniors is who Coach Dobrin actually brought up uh, when it came to guys that are going to make an impact right away, but that is not the end of it all. A strong freshman class. He really said this is the first freshman class since COVID-19, believe it or not, that he feels real confident in. They're coming in and actually had a good surplus of kids in here uh, for that freshman class. Good chance to learn from a lot of the veterans out there, those seniors. And again, doing quick math on my score sheet here, looking at uh, about nine seniors for this uh, Conneaut High School football team. So a lot of impact players gonna be playing both ways. Both smaller rosters, and if you're looking for keys to the game, you can look no further than winning the line of scrimmage. Both teams, both coaches saying, you know what, we need this. We need to be able to do that well in order to come out on top and win the ball game. Also, if you're looking again at Conneaut, of course, it's gonna be able to run the ball well. I got a bunch of different guys, including and quarterback Max Gleason that can move with the ball and make plays. And the other side, of course, you're looking at Aaron Valley. You want to make sure you're getting the ball to Robert Rogers. He is going to be a big key tonight. Quick injury report for you guys as well before we get things underway with the kickoff. Just moments away here in beautiful Conneaut, Ohio. On the Conneaut side, the home squad, Jaden Anderson, the only player in a junior offensive lineman. Coach tells me he actually may be one of the best all-around players on the team, believe it or not. He had knee surgery last season. He is about, hopefully, just a week away. Got a doctor's appointment coming up on Monday. Jaden and uh, fam there wishing you guys the best as you get forward. Hopefully, he cleared to play next week. Only one week off, not too bad. On the other side, again, freshman uh, Carter Turk going to be out of this game for Grand Valley. Also looking at Nick Krieg, again, number 19, junior 6'3", tight end and defensive lineman. And Braden Hart uh, will also be out of action today for the Grand Valley Mustangs. Uh, Braden is, again, a six-foot junior running back and linebacker. And there you go, yep. So we got the kickoff just moments away here. Foss Peters, Rogers, all the way back for Grand Valley. And it's going to be Bryce Sperlin. That's right, he's a kicker too. Four positions on the depth chart. How about that? For Sperlin. And with that, we are underway, and it's a bit of a pooch kick to the sideline here on the right side. Ball bouncing to the 30 and taken down. Ball still on the field and low, but eventually picked up. It looks like Grand Valley's got it, but a bit of a scary moment to start the college or the uh, high school football season, I should say. That was big number 64. 
Again, add up Hilton. How about a freshman making possibly the biggest play early on in the game for Grand Valley, keeping possession. And now it is time and for the Mustangs to get their first offensive possession underway. Of course, led once again by big number seven, Sammy Goforth. Mentioned injury last season, trying to make a comeback this time around. Got some valuable experience now leading this Grand Valley Mustang offense against a tough linebacking core. Again, and defensive line, really the front seven altogether looking pretty solid. Uh, four in Conneaut. First and 10, ball in the 23 yard line. It is a handoff up the middle and tough sledding, maybe a yard if that. And again, that was Camden Cottrell with the carry, the senior 5'9 running back and linebacker. So now it's going to be second and nine from the 24, 11.30 to go in the first. And there is a penalty on the play, looking like it could be in the area of a false start here. Get official word from the white hat down on the field. And actually, no, they're going to call, looks like it's going to be on the defense encroachment. So that's going to move the ball up a little bit, make this a second and manageable now. Second and well, about four yards or so from the 30. So Grand Valley, a couple breaks, recovering that pooch kick, and now getting a defensive penalty early on here in this first quarter. So again, second and three. And go forth under center. To the snap, it's gonna be a swing handoff. There's Roberts on the right side. He gets maybe a yard or two. Robert Rogers on the carry. And for Conneaut, on the tackle there, big number 63. Now for the squad, that is Dylan Phillip. So here we go, third and three. They're going to say next to no gain on that. First test for this in offense here for the Mustangs. Go forth again under center. Roger swings over, it's quick handoff at the middle and a hole, big first down, past the 40, down to the, about the 40, 243 yard line. Solid carry by Cottrell again. Gamda Cottrell coming out with a couple solid runs. And it is a first first down for the Grand Valley Mustangs. Solid run. For Cottrell, their quick hand off there. Go forth off the middle, pushing and pushing the pile. Cottrell again is going to get a big workload tonight. Solid gain of about four. And there you go. Scotty Edwards, defensive line with tackle senior. Another one of those guys that Coach Dobrin was talking about. On that line, that linebacking core, able to make those big plays. Second and now six from the 45-yard line of Grand Valley. Go forth on the move on the right side. He breaks right and gets tackled down for essentially no gain. Solid bull rush on the left side. Should be actually the right side of the in offensive line, left side of the defensive line. So now a third in medium. Sure if you ask Coach Nims, you want to be a little bit closer, but. 45 yard line of Grand Valley, another test for the Mustangs. Third down and six, nine minutes to go in this first quarter. Go forth now in the shotgun. He's got trips wide to the right. He rolls to his right. Go forth looking, throwing, and it's just out of the reach of Rogers. Incomplete. Robert Rogers had the separation, the ball just to put out a little bit too wide. And now on fourth down and six, we're going to see what Grand Valley does. So go for still in the game. Two wide left, two wide right. Now actually a slot on the left side. And go for taking a few more steps back. Looks like he's going to pull some punting here, possibly. And go for Depp going to pull double duty and punt as well. That ball is going to trickle down and take a Positive Conneaut bounce down to about the 25-yard line. A punt of about 35 yards there. I should say, yeah, about 30 yards. So, good stand by the Conneaut defense. Now we're going to see if the offense can take advantage. 
Remember, eight and three last season as independent for Conneaut. And again, uh, solid defensive stand. And one first down on that drive. Other than that, it was tough sledding. And for Grand Valley's offense, now we're going to see what Max Gleason can do. Coach uh, Dobrin telling me he's a runner. He's going to be able to make plays with those feet. Again, he's one of those seniors. One of those eight seniors, believe it or not. I think I said nine earlier. Correct myself there with that. As Gleason is in the shotgun. And it's going to be a pitch handoff. And swarming his Grand Valley. Good cutback. Big run there. Still on his feet. Going all the way through to the right side. And eventually still pushing forward and going down. Wyatt Payne, the senior running back. What a carry. All the way down to the 46-yard line. A 21-yard gain. What a big play for Connie on an offense right off the bat. And Wyatt Payne, one of those seniors. You're going to see a lot of 12s. As far as class number, as far as players making plays today. The numbers in the field will be different, but the thing stays the same, the class stays the same. A lot of seniors are big playmakers. And right there, Wyatt Payne showed why he's one of them. 21 yard run. Kept that play alive, almost went out of bounds, managed to stay in and get a few extra yards on the plays. So now it's first and 10, throwing 46. Lease and hands, right side, big stuff on the line. And that may be a negative play. And that uh, was Wyatt Payne again on the carry. This time he loses about two yards. Connor Sullivan, senior. Linebacker in on that tackle for a loss for in the Grand Valley Mustangs. So now it's second and 12th, known 4 to 4. 7.37 to go in this first quarter here at Riccardi Stadium inside Jocelyn Field. Lisa hands off. There goes Wyatt Payne. Breaking the left side. Big hole going down 30. Stop at the 25. Still pushing forward. He can't be tackled and eventually gets pulled down. After rolling through three different white jerseys, down to the 20-yard line, solid one by Wyatt Payne, his second of the drive. Going for the official yardage on that. Look, my calculator, oh, I'm gonna try and put that in here. <laughs> solid run from Wyatt Payne. Give it about 36 yard run there. My goodness, Wyatt Payne on fire here in the early part of this game. Three carries to this point for Wyatt. He's got 54 yards. My goodness. Another whistle, and it looks like uh, it's going to be a timeout. Connie, I believe it or not, taking the timeout there. 7.22 to go in this first quarter. And the story early on, folks, well, it has been Wyatt Payne after a solid stop. Only one first down for Grand Valley's offense on their first drive, which almost didn't happen. Took a recovery of a pooch kick there to actually get the ball back from Adam Hilton, the uh, freshman from Grand Valley. Only one first down. Now, Connie on the other side, pushing the ball deep into Grand Valley territory, just two yards away from the red zone early on in this first quarter. And you're seeing, obviously, here early on, exactly what Coach Dobrin talked about, being able to run the ball, being able to have different options. You try to prepare for Max Gleason back there, but it turns out that Wyatt Payne's been the focal point, at least in this first drive. Get three carries for 54 yards alone for Payne. It has been uh, a question yet to be answered early on from this Grand Valley defense. Can they respond? Back on the field now, first and 10 ball again on the 22-yard line of Grand Valley. Gleason fakes the handoff, takes the ball up the middle, and he is met by a trio of defenders there. Gets maybe a handful of yards there, one or two, to be honest. Getting about two on the play. So second down, about eight. Right on the fringe of the red zone there. Ball, the nose is actually just on the hair of the 20-yard line. Gleason getting the play. Coach Tobert on the sideline. Twenty-eight in the backfield with again uh, Gleason. That is Scotty Edwards. Gleason will keep it though on the right side. Running right side finds a hole, cuts back to the right. He's out to the ten, the five, turns the corner, touchdown, Pontiac. 
Flag late on the play. We'll see what happens. There may be a hold. Now the question is, who is it against? Holding, and it looks like it's going to be on the offense. This play might be coming back. And it looks like it is. Tough blow on the penalty side of things for Connie. They had one early on the defensive end, didn't really hurt him. This time it takes a touchdown off the board. So no yardage lost from what we're seeing here because the play happened down near, the, I believe, the five-yard line. So between the five and the ten. So the penalty will come back to there and it will replay second down. Sounds like nothing happened pretty much. <laughs> there you go. And there you saw Gleason's running ability. Coach Dobrin talked about it. He's got the ability to take off and make big plays with his feet. That was a 20-yard touchdown, but instead we're replaying it. Second and eight. Gleason going to throw the ball. Looking right, dump off to the right side. It is caught. Breaking back inside on the 20 down to the 16-yard line. There's Bryce Sperlin. Does a little bit of everything. Kicks, plays a little bit of quarterback too, some tight end. This time he catches the screen for four yards. So Gleason completes his first pass of the season. So now we're looking at uh, third and five in the 16 yard line. 5.37 to go in this first quarter. Two wide left, one wide to the right. Fort Gleason in the shotgun. He's got wide in the backfield, hands off, left side. There he goes, turns up the field, down to the 10, and he's going to have a Conniac first down. Wyatt Payne with the carry. And he gets enough to move the chains for the Spartans. Six yard gain, he only needed five. Four carries, 60 yards right now for Wyatt Payne on this opening drive. Night is still young, folks. Gleason in shotgun, he's got two wide left, one wide to the right. He's got spur one in the backfield and almost lost the snap, spins back to the right side. Gleason trying to break through and get back to the line of scrimmage. He gets there and then some actually gets a couple yards out of that play. If anyone watched the Johnny Manziel documentary here recently, they kind of look like a uh, little A&M days there, but uh, Gleason getting actually a gain of yards there and that play could have been a lot worse than what it was, but instead it's a two yard gain and Conniat moves the ball a little more forward here. So it is second and goal from the eight. After the snap got bobbled in the shotgun from Gleason, looked like he was gonna try and roll it to the right and make a pass there, but improvisation at its finest. Gleason, two carries for four yards, one for one for four yards. Passing and rushing the same. This time we'll hand off in the shotgun, left side and brought down, almost tried to pitch, ball comes out, and it is recovered by Grand Valley. Looks like Bryce, no, it was, uh, that was actually not Bryce Sperling. That was Ty Coville that was in the backfield there, I believe. It tried to pitch it back. And yeah, you saw it, folks. A fumble recovered by Grand Valley. Yeah, and he was stopped pretty much at the line of scrimmage, but Coble tried to pitch it back to Gleason, it looked like, and now instead Grand Valley, the defense gets a big break, and the offense comes back on the field. So here we go. Another shot here for Sammy Goforth. And the Mustangs, deep in their own territory, their own 15-yard line. Goforth turns, he'll actually keep the ball to himself and gets tackled almost immediately. Maybe a yard, if that, on the carry. That was uh, Chetty Arcaro with the tackle. And a defensive lineman, 6'1", a sophomore. Up there for Conneaut, making the play. Gonna hear seniors' names a lot tonight, but we see a sophomore make a big one. Second down and nine from the 16. Their own 16, Grand Valley go forth in the shotgun. He will end the side that ball. It's also bobbled and swallowed up in the backfield. What a play. And that. Look, it was Isaiah Bowles maybe that got back there. Big 64, Ryan Turner also back there to make that play. Big loss of five yards, makes it third and 13 now. You can go forth again in the shotgun, two wide to the right, one in the slot, running back on his hip on his right hip, rolls out to the right side, gonna have to throw a pass. Gonna be a screen back to the left side, it is caught. Here we go, breaking to the right side through. 
Down to the 25, out of bounds at the 27 yard line. John Foss Peters with the catch. Goforth completing his first pass. And Grand Valley with a first down on that play. Solid 16 yard completion. Foss Peters showing his ability to be a dual threat there with the catch. No handoff by Goforth, left side. There he is again. John Foss Peters with the carry. Maybe a yard or so. And many different names are going to be heard call for Grand Valley's offense when it comes to running the football and making plays. Foss Peters definitely give one of those big ones for him, a junior. Here we go, second and nine, ball on their own 30. Go forth, hands right side. Nope, gonna keep it himself back up the middle. Spun down for little to no gain if that. We're gonna say no gain. Good bid tackle there. By Connie, by Ethan Osborne. Another one of those seniors. Linebacking core is big. Coach Dobrin in this Conneaut Spartan Ball Club, and you're seeing why right there coming down, making that tackle. Now third and long, nine yards to go to gain at the 30-yard line for Grand Valley. 151 to go in this first quarter. Go for it, take the snap, rolls out to his right, gonna throw it up, and it's over the head of Rogers. Incomplete. Looking like a three and out. After that one first down. Long fourth down, and maybe if they were on the other 30 yard line, maybe you'd go for it, but in this situation, you're probably gonna look at Sammy and say, time to punt the ball again. And this time it's gonna be Wyatt Payne in the back. For Conneaut, ready to return this punt. And the snap is a little high. Go forth, gets it. It's a rough punt. Ball's going to roll and take a bounce for Grand Valley. They actually downed it at the 45. That was again Camden Cottrell who downed the ball. Getting a feller favorable bounce. Maybe you want to let that go a little further, but instead, Connie will take the ball back over on their own 45 yard line. Solid field position for the second drive. The first one was promising, it really was. After a trio of solid ones from Wyatt Payne, there was a touchdown that was taken off the board with a penalty for Conneaut, and then a fumble. And by one of the seniors, Ty Koval on the left side, tried to pitch it back to Max Gleason, and just couldn't make it happen. But no harm, no foul. Still 0-0 to score, 139 to go in this first quarter. Conneaut with the ball on their own 45-yard line. Gleason in the shotgun, three wide to the left. Actually hand off to the right side. Turning back up, solid hit. Again, that was Carrick Dobrin for Kaniyat, number five. Uh, he is a uh, sophomore in running back, wide receiver combo. Plays a little bit of quarterback too. I think everyone at this point plays almost every position <laughs> at this. Uh, this juncture for both sides. The second and about four, right at about midfield, just past that midfield stripe for Kania. Enough inside, solid stand there by Grand Valley on the defensive end. Dobrin got the carry again, this time could not get much, if any. So now we're looking at a third and manageable for the Spartans. 40 seconds ticking off the clock here. At Riccardi Stadium inside Jocelyn Field in a scoreless ball game so far. Connie has threatened. They've even gotten to the end zone one time. They got it called back. They'll make some noise before the quarter ends. 26 seconds and change, ticking off the clock. Placing in the shotgun. Third and five. Going to roll to his left. He's going to take off with the ball. Almost got brought down. Then he gets swallowed up by number 11 for Grand Valley. That is Robert Rogers. Yeah, he does stuff on defense too, folks, not even just offense. Big tackle for a loss for Grand Valley. And that's going to end the first quarter of play. 
We're at the same place we started, 0-0 zero to zero on the scoreboard here at Riccardi Stadium at Joslin Field in beautiful Conneaut, Ohio. The Spartans and the Mustangs haven't got on the board just yet. And a solid stand there by Grand Valley. You can get discouraged in that moment, especially uh, getting kind of a break with the fumble deep in their own red zone. And for Grand Valley, they actually got that ball back. They moved it down the field, punted out to the 45, then a big stop there. And what was the last play of the first quarter for Robert Rogers, again, an All-Ohio player for this team. It's a player that Coach Nims talked about highly and said, hey, he's gonna make plays all over the field. And yeah, that's not just offensively as a receiver and as a running back. No, he'll make plays, again, as a defensive, again, player too, as a defensive back. And you just saw it coming out from the defensive backfield, making a huge tackle on Sammy Goforth. Took away some solid uh, yardage there too from that big kid. And now we're looking at, again, fourth and about five from the 49 yard line and change here. Of course, again, Conyot wearing their dark blue jerseys. You see it in the camera, kind of looks like they're a bit of a gold-ish silver numbers with the white helmets. Again, for your viewing audience here as well, again, Grand Valley wearing their white jerseys with the white helmets and blue stripes. Punt is off, and it is a good one down inside the 20. It's going to take a favorable bounce for Conneaut. Rolling, 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 down inside the five to the four-yard line. I don't think Coach Dogler could have drew that punt up any better if he tried. Solid punt. And of course, it was Bryce Sperlin who kicked it away. He's got four positions on this team, and... Kicker and punter is definitely one of them, and he showed it off right there. And I pinned Grand Valley all the way back inside their own five-yard line as we get going here in the second quarter. Again, from beautiful Conneaut, Ohio. Looks like the rain yeah. starting to move a little bit out of the way. Good to see some things clearing up. Grand, Grand, Grand Valley is going to have first and ten from their own four-yard line. And when you have linebackers in the front seven, like... Connie, you gotta be thinking heavy pressure here, trying to maybe get a tackle for a loss and talk about possibly getting some points on the board on the defensive side of the ball. The fourth under center, uh, looks like somebody jumped. Question is who? And they're gonna say possibly Connie out here was off sides. Nope, and they are, that is right. The second encroachment of the first half from the Connie out defensive line. Some nerves out there maybe a little bit. So that's gonna move the ball to the Grand Valley nine yard line. So the, the Mustangs with a little more suitable first and five and a little more space to breathe back there for a junior quarterback, Sandy Goforth. That'll be the third penalty of the game so far for Conia. Go forth in the shotgun. Fair in motion is Rogers. Go forth will keep it up the middle, rolls through, gets pulled down. Now it's big 54 for Conneaut. I mean, Corey Pearson with the tackle. Hey, shocker, Pearson, a senior, by the way. 6'1", defensive lineman. Ends up being a gain of about two for go for it. So second and three. Go forth rolling out to the right, looking, gonna throw in a slot, and it's caught. And out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. Robert Rogers with the catch. Down at about the 21, gain of nine, and a first down for the Mustangs. I go for a two for three for 25 yards through the air. He's got two carries for three yards. Rogers, that's his first catch of the season. Made the big tackle on defense last time around, and this time making a big catch for a first down. And it will be first down and 10, the 21-yard line. 10.50 to go in this first half. Grand Valley with the ball, go forth under center. He checks, man in motion is Rodgers. He will give it to him, Rodgers goes right side, takes the handoff, he's fighting forward down just past the 25 yard line to the 25 and a half yard line. This time Rodgers getting some positive yards on a carry. First one went for no gain as far as a rush is concerned. This time he gets a handful of yards. Rodgers is going to be a big, big target today. 6'2", 190 pounds at the wide receiver and defensive end possession. And there is an injury on the field right now. 
and 10.32 to go in this first half. And resume play with second and five. Uh, and good to see Camden Cottrell getting back up off his uh, off the ground and back running over to the huddle for Grand Valley. Again, the injury report, as we mentioned kind of at the beginning of this broadcast, folks, uh, fairly good for both teams. Only one injury on Conneaut's side. I mentioned Jaden Anderson, kind of one of the heart and soul type players for this team. He's expected to hopefully be back as soon as next week after that knee injury he suffered last season. And for Grand Valley, just only three injuries to report for this week. So you'd like to see that early on in the year. Hopefully it stays that way for both teams, keeping that injury report as light as possible. And now here we go, second and five. 26 yard line, Grand Valley trying to make a drive here. The offense has been able to get a first down or two, but not really put a long drive together so far in this first half. Go forth in the shotgun. He is gonna hand off right side to keep it himself actually, and he's brought down. Big, big tackle from 58, Scotty Edwards. Senior defensive lineman making the big play. Go forth had nowhere to go. Now looking at a third and long, four yard loss on the play. Now what can Coach Nims draw up for the Grand Valley offense to try and get the ball moving? He mentioned every drive they managed to get one first down. After that, it's been tough sledding for this Conneaut defense. Third and long. Go forth in the shotgun. He's got two wide left. And he will keep it himself with a wall of white in front of him. He goes to the left side. He is brought down. Essentially no gain on the play. Bryce Sperlin there. As well as number 64, Ryan Turner on the tackle for Conneaut. It'll be fourth and long, nine minutes to go in this first half, and another stop by this Conneaut defense. They've a lot of first down, like I mentioned, on every drive to this point, but after that first down, they've clamped down on this Grand Valley offense. Go forward this way back, about 15 yards back to punt this one away. Snap is out, kick is out. It's a low kick, it's off a line, and it's down. And go forth, jumps on it, low kick. And it's gonna be great field position for Kania. The angle on the kick a little low and it actually went into the back of an offensive lineman and Sammy Goforth uh, afraid of the possibility of someone picking that up and taking it to a short run of the end zone. Go on the ball to make sure that that didn't get any worse than what it could be. But now it's great field position for Kania all the way down at the 23 yard line of Grand Valley. Couple breaks. Starting to go now, Conneaut's way. Can they make this drive count and get on the scoreboard? It is still zero to zero. 8.32 to go in this first half here in Conneaut at Ricardi Stadium inside Jocelyn Field. Max Gleason in the shotgun. Two wide left, two wide right. He's got Wyatt Payne on his hip. He'll hand it to Payne up the middle, breaks through, still on his feet. Down to the 10, five, touchdown, Conneaut. What a run, 23 yards into the end zone. One play, one score, six nothing. Spartans over the Mustangs. And what has been a eventful first half for Wyatt Payne. Five carries, 83 yards and a touchdown on the ground for Payne in the first half. And now looking for the extra point. And here we go, Bryce Sperlin, he's made some plays all over the field, now trying to kick the extra point. It is up and it is good. Seven to nothing, Conneaut over Grand Valley. We, Grand Valley, we have a score for the first time this high school football season on the inaugural CBC TV game of the week. It's game one of our double header. Conneaut Spartans, is their first game in the CBC, and now their first lead as a CBC team. They lead the Grand Valley Mustangs 7-0 off a 23-yard run from senior Wyatt Payne. Yeah, your coach Dobrin, 8-3 last season, a very successful year as an independent, looking to build off that momentum now 
in a conference here in Ohio. And after a bit of a rough patch, a touchdown initially called off due to a holding penalty earlier on in that first quarter. The blue finally break through and it took number six, Wyatt Payne to do it. One play on that drive, 23 yards. Solid run too. Wyatt was actually caught at around the 10 to 15 yard line, fought through some traffic and actually pushed out to the outside on the right side of the field and made his way into the end zone. Resilient Wyatt Payne, hard to bring down and having a solid opening game against Grand Valley. These two teams, as we mentioned before in the pregame, folks, not necessarily foreign to each other. They scrimmage each other a lot. They play each other. The coaches know each other, have mutual respect. And now can Grand Valley respond since Conneaut's on the board? A pooch kick right side. Ball fielded this time at the 25-yard line. Left side, breaking through, still on his feet, all the way down to midfield. How about Foss Peters? John Foss Peters, number 13 for Grand Valley with a solid return of about 25 yards. Midfield, solid field position for Grand Valley. And they take advantage this time around. Let's see if junior quarterback Sammy Yoforth can lead the team on a scoring drive and try and answer Conneaut. In 7 to 0, 8 18 to go in this first half from Conneaut. The Spartans leading the Grand Valley Mustangs, as we mentioned, by a touchdown. Go forth in the shotgun. Stoppage of play. Looks like it's going to be a timeout this time from Conneaut. Saw something, uh, pushed over and saw something he didn't like, so Conneaut will talk it over. And this is a big deal now. Winning the line of scrimmage is going to be big, and we've seen Conneaut essentially dominate when it comes to the run game to this point. And go for it for Grand Valley. He's been able to throw the ball fairly effectively. He's only thrown the ball three times, but he completed two of those passes for 25 yards. And as far as running the ball for Grand Valley, only about you know, roughly 23 yards of offense rush. On the other side, you look at Conneaut. Bit of a different story. They are approaching 100 yards of total rushing offense. And Max Gleason has only thrown one pass. He completed it for four yards earlier in the game. So again, first and 10 from just about the midfield marker for Grand Valley. Trying to piece something together on offense. They've had three drives to this point. They've all ended in punts. They've had a first down, a single first down on each of those three drives, but have not been able to put something together yet. Now as the first half begins to at the latter stages, trying to get some momentum before that halftime break. Again, Foss Peters in motion, goes back to the right side. Go forth in the shotgun. Again, Foss Peters looking back. And rolling out to the right side. Go forth looking, he's going to keep it himself and go out of bounds after a gain. Oh, maybe a yard, if that. Looks like they're going to mark him down just past the 50 or right on the 50, so essentially no gain on the play. I, think I mentioned before that the rain was in the forecast uh, tonight here in Conneaut, Ohio. But uh, now looking like it's uh, kind of steering clear for the most part. Expected to see maybe some more showers pick back up in the next half hour or so. So want to take advantage of that ball being dry while we can. Second and 10 ball in the 50 for Grand Valley. Go for it, takes a snap, hands the ball off, off the middle, pushing forward and actually bouncing back and down. For Grand Valley. It was number 12, Camden Cottrell. Just four carries for 16 yards for Cottrell. He's the leading rusher on Grand Valley's side, but now another third and long on the Conneaut 49 yard line. Excellent field position after the great return from Foss Peters, but can Grand Valley get another first down and try and get some momentum here? And that looks like it's going to be a timeout on the Grand Valley side. As Coach Nims wants to talk it over with his offense. Big third down coming here. Big, uh, important third down in this first half. 7.31 to go. It is 7-0. Conneaut Spartans leading the Grand Valley Mustangs. 
in your CVCTV high school football game of the week. Again, a doubleheader, as I mentioned, tomorrow night will be in Beachwood. Again, as uh, Beachwood takes on Orange. Myself, Double A, Anthony Alford will be on the call for you. That matchup, a rivalry game. A lot of alumni are gonna be there from Beachwood as well. It's gonna be a, uh, a fun day, an awesome halftime. Expected not only here tonight, but as well as there in Beachwood tomorrow. Make sure you guys tune in as well for that. And both teams retaking the field. Big deal for Grand Valley right now in this moment with 7.30 to go in this first half. A long third down for momentum purposes. Right now it is all in favor of Kania. And Grand Valley stifle that a little bit and try and get some points on the board sooner rather than later. Go forth under center. Foss Peters in motion. There goes Go Forth. Going left side throws. It is two Foss Peters. He breaks back inside down to about the 44 yard line. So three for four, 29 yards for Go Forth today. He's throwing the ball fairly well in limited attempts. But now it's going to be uh, a tough go here. We're talking about fourth and about four and the offense going to stay on the field go fourth under center big fourth down now for grand valley and off right side and nowhere to go rogers brought down robert rogers couldn't find the hole ty koval you're gonna hear that name a lot this season broke the team record for tackles last year he makes the big play saw bryce sperlin back there as well a couple different county hot spartans making that play and just nowhere to go for Rodgers, who ended up actually losing a few yards on the play. There's a turnover on downs. Conneaut has the ball back now for another defensive stand and momentum with good field position on their own 45-yard line. And just 6.52 to go in this first half. Gleason is in the shotgun. Takes a snap, hands off. Left side. No, he's going to keep it himself. Solid fake by... Gleason fooled me. <laughs> and he gets about a yard or two on the game. Going to be second down and long. Again, a four. The Spartans. And Gleason on the day. Four carries for seven yards. He's got, he's one for one throwing the ball, I should say. One completion for four yards. Quiet night. He did have a rushing touchdown in that first quarter that was called back because of a hold. And on this side of the field, but now, of course, kind of moving the other direction and Trying to keep that momentum after that score in that last drive. Second and eight, ball on their own 47 yard line, taking down just over six minutes to go in this first half. Gleason looking, looking, gonna roll out to the left side, still looking, he's gonna take off. Cut back to the 50, down to the 45, big hit and taken out of bounds. Near the first down marker. That was uh, Connor Sullivan, the senior, on the tackle for Grand Valley. And they're gonna give Conneaut a first down. So Gleason with his first big run, that counted at least for the day. Five carries, 15 yards on the ground for Gleason. And with that, he's going to put uh, his team right now over the 100-yard mark rushing for the half. And we still have six minutes to go, folks, in this first half for Kanye. Big chunk of that coming from Wyatt Payne. Gleason hands off left side. Speaking of which, Payne breaks the left side. He cuts down to the 30 to the 25, 20. Still on his feet. He stays in. Touchdown, Kadia. The balancing act from Wyatt Payne. What a run. 55 yards, sorry, 45 yards for a score. He looked like he may have been out of bounds, but didn't matter. Counts. What a run from Wyatt Payne. What a first half. 45-yard touchdown run. My goodness. Extra point is up from Bryce Sperlin. That is good. 14 to nothing, Spartans. Who had Wyatt Payne on the bingo card? He is having a night already, and we're not even at halftime, folks. 14 to zero, two rushing touchdowns, 128 yards on the ground for Payne. There's plenty of ball game left to go. Here at Riccardi Stadium inside Joslin Field. 
Why did Payne just have in the game? He tiptoed that sideline when he got down to about the 20 to the 15. And it looked like maybe he stepped out. Ref made it clear, though. He said, nope, he was good. A balancing act for the ages. Puts Kamiat up now by two scores in Grand Valley. Coach Dems have to be asking, what do we have to do to stop Wyatt Payne? Unbelievable run there to cap off. Another quick scoring drive for the Spartans. It was tough sliding early on. A couple penalties, a couple mistakes drew him back. And now looking like a, uh, a solid first half for the Spartans in Grand Valley respond. And it'll be Bryce Sperlin who will kick the ball back off for Kanyan. Two for two and extra points tonight. Young man has a boot on him. And there it is, solid kickoff. Gonna be fielded all the way back down at about the six. It's dropped and then picked back up. Breaking left side, got some room to run on the left side and eventually brought down at about the 26 yard line. That was Lane Gallagher with the return, sophomore. And a receiver defensive back for Grand Valley. So now we're going to see a first down and 10 ball on the 25 yard line for Grand Valley. And it is uh, again been tough sledding for this offense. First three drives were able to put together a little bit of momentum, but just couldn't seem to get a long drive going. Last drive, unfortunately. Uh, just turned the ball over on downs on the other side of the field, and then it was a quick work for Kanyat to make it 14-0. Go for it. Looks left side, he's gonna throw, fakes, big pump fake. Looky, looky, throwing up, he's gonna throw up to Rogers. he falls, and it's out of the reach of the defensive back. That's his quarterback counterpart right there. Max Gleason, who had an angle, Rogers actually slipped on the turf and fell down. It's just an natural grass and fell. And Gleason just a little bit out of his reach. Coach Nim's going to start taking some shots down the field with his Ohio receiver. Second and 10 on their own 25-yard line. 5.32 to go in this first half. And Grand Valley trailing the home Conneaut Spartans, 14 to nothing. First time we really got a chance to see Sammy go for it, air out a pass, just a little bit long. Rodgers, of course, falling. Go for it now under center. It's Peters in motion. Go for it, keeps it, goes left side, and the defensive line for Kanyat as advertised, playing so well against the run. Maybe a yard or two on the carry there. Get in on the tackle there. Number 50, Chetty Ocaro, sophomore, making some plays on the D-line. So it's gonna be third and long. About five minutes to go in this first half. Grand Valley trailing Kanyat, 14 to zero. And again, just haven't been able to make that play or get that consistency going on offense. Kanye defense deserving a lot of credit for coming out and playing well so far this evening. The fourth is in the shotgun. He's got can run back on his hip. Trips out left. Go forth looking, gonna fire a pass over. It's intercepted by Kanye. Breaking back to the right side down to the 23-yard line. What a play. On the right side. And I believe the official number looks like that was yeah, Thaddeus Huya with the big interception, a junior. Huya says hi -ya, flexes his defensive muscle, and now it's first down and 10. For Kanyat in great field position again. On the Grand Valley 23 yard line. Trying to throw the ball through the air a little bit more was Grand Valley. Sense of urgency, but unfortunately it backpedals on him now. Gleason in the shotgun. He breaks to the left side. He's got some room to run and some blockers. Cuts back out left to the 15 10, and he's out inside the 10 down to a, about the six yard line. Solid run by Gleason there. Seventeen yards or so for Gleason on the carry. 
It's going to be a first down and goal now. Gleason, six carries, 32 yards on the evening. Only throw one pass, but he's completed it for four yards. Haven't needed to. They ran the ball extremely well. As Ganiat. If it hasn't been Wyatt Payne, which it has been for the majority of the evening so far, Max Gleason able to do some work back there too. First down and goal from the six. Ganiat trying to make this a three-score game. Payne in motion. Gleason keeps the ball, cuts left, gets to the outside, dives, touchdown, Ganiat. <laughs> He tasted it earlier. Max Gleason got into the end zone, but had to call back this time. No ifs, ands, or buts about that one. He's in, and it's 20 to nothing. Conneaut coming out firing in the second quarter. Coach Dober mentioned that Max can run the ball too. It's not just Wyatt Payne who's able to do it. And you have Gleason back there that can make plays like that. Looking pretty good. A good start to the season. Kick is up by Sperlin, and it sneaks outside the right and upright. No good. And then we got 421 left in the ball game in this first half, folks, and it's 20 to nothing. Kanyan, after a 0 to 0 first quarter, have put 20 on the scorecard in the second frame. And Grand Valley's offense just can't seem to get anything going. The Kanyan defense just stifling them. Now forcing their own turnover. Both teams have one turnover apiece in this first half. Difference is Kanye turned that into points. And if you're Coach Dams on that uh, Grand Valley sideline right now, you're really asking yourself here, what do we have to do to get some momentum on this offensive end? They tried airing the ball out a little bit more this past drive, and it did result in a Sandy go for interception. Now, for the previous drive, he was three for four for 29 yards. Now he's three for six for 29, and he has that INT. Well, it's been tough sledding running the football for Goforth as well. Just six carries for four yards. And there's a team still trying to break 60 total yards. His Grand Valley. This kind of defense has come out guns a blazing. The linebacking core, another secondary making those plays. A little pooch kick. Uh, big return again coming here from Foss Peters down the right sideline, gets hit out of bounds. At about midfield, so it's going to be a solid starting field position again for Grand Valley around midfield. Can they make this one count? 4-14 to go in this first half. It is a three-score game, 20 to nothing. Conneaut in the lead. In their very first CVC conference game. Now it's not technically divisional. These two teams do play in separate divisions. Of course, Conneaut joining the Lake Division and Grand Valley, of course, uh, in the different Valley Division. Team, two teams with two different tails from last season, of course. Conneaut eight and three last year, building off of that. Grand Valley one and five in division play last year, trying to right the ship here. Go forth under center. He turns, he rolls to the left. Looks like he's gonna take the air again, throwing it up this time deep. He's got a receiver coming back. Incomplete. That was Jerry Schultz, the 6'4 senior. If you're going to go to a guy, go to a guy who's 6'4 that can make plays on the outside. It's a little bit underthrown. Daddy has Huya on the coverage there, solid coverage from the man who had the interception in the last drive for County Hot. Second and 10 now from the 50. And seeing a pattern here with the Mustangs, trying to air the ball out a little more. Need to make some plays, some big ones. And this front seven's been challenging, to say the least, when it comes to running the ball at this point, so maybe throwing the ball is the key here. Go forth under center again. And it's gonna be a little bit of a just uh, stretch and hand off there. And that is Foss Peters, who runs left side, gets uh, about four yards or so. Dylan Phillip on the tackle, by the way, junior defensive lineman for Kanye. So we're not seeing the seniors get their names called tonight. Some juniors and some sophomores, even a few freshmen get their names called too. The balance on this team, on both these teams, is pretty solid. The third and six from their 46-yard line of Kanye. 
Go forth under center. He's going to keep it himself. Go to the right side. Cuts up field. Gets the first down and more down to the 35 yard line. And that was needed for Grand Valley. And what was the biggest carry of the night? For Sammy, go forth 11 yards and moving the chains. Had to make it happen. Three minutes and change to go in this first half. And now. Grand Valley starting to put some momentum on the board here on offense. Down to the 35 yard line in of Kania. Your coach names, you definitely want some points on the board before going into halftime. The big second quarter that Kania has had, you need that momentum if you're wearing a white jersey tonight. Go forth in the shotgun again, he'll roll to the left. Going to keep rolling to the left. He's going to look back to his right, going to actually take it back left. Cut back to his right and go down for about no game. Sammy Goforth looked like he possibly had Schultz running down the middle in a seam and just couldn't make that throw. Had to tuck it back under and just get back to the line of scrimmage. Live to fight another down. Scotty Edwards on the tackle. Going to hear his name a lot tonight as well. 6'2", 245-pound D lineman. Big boy down there making big plays. That could have been disastrous for Kanyan if Goforth had a little more time, but Scotty Edwards made sure that didn't happen. Just over two minutes to go in this first half. Grand Valley with the ball, second and 10 on Conneaut's 35 yard line. A little bit of misdirection there and ends up being in Rogers' hands. He cuts back to the right side and it's maybe two yards on the play. And Ryan Turner making the tackle there again. The sophomore defensive lineman. Heard his name called a few times in this first half. And now, third and long once again. Second, third, nine of this drive on the 34-yard line this time of Conneaut. Grand Valley's offense trying to make something happen. Go forth in the shotgun. He'll bring Rodgers in motion. He'll take a step back. Looks, he'll throw it out. There is a penalty on the play. Possible hold coming out. Rodgers going to make a move and cut back inside. Rodgers cutting up the field. He breaks to the left to the 10-5 touchdown. But will it stand? Looks like it's in the area of holding, and it is going to be against Grand Valley. What a penalty that is. Very tough break there for the Mustangs, who were looking for some sort of momentum on offense. They thought they had it. But that ball is coming back. Spot foul there on the hold, so it's going to be third and long again. They're moving backwards even further. And it looked like a third and 14 from the 41 yard line. Actually, no, down to the 39, I should say. So that takes a touchdown off the board. It was a pass to Robert Rogers. And it was called fairly early. It looks like the Grand Valley's going to call their second time out and powwow on this with 111 to go in this first half. And Again, that could be a debilitating blow to the, the psyche of this offense right here, having that happen. Big screenplay for a touchdown. Rodgers showing off why he was all Ohio for a reason there on that big run, but having a call back. I mean, for Grand Valley. And time uh, ticking down in this first half from McCarty Stadium inside. Joslin Field, again, beautiful Connie out of Ohio. The rain, for the most part, after kickoff is held off, but in time will only tell. We're getting closer to the 8 o'clock hour when we're expecting to see more showers move into the area. In this cross, we can keep it off and keep that ball dry for the folks down there on the field. Again, awaiting the Grand Valley offense is a third and 14 from the Connie 39 yard line. This Possibly one of the better chances that Grand Valley has had to try and get something on the board here in this first half. You gotta imagine it's probably four down territory to year two for Coach Nims. You try and cut this in half here and then make it a more manageable fourth down with your quarterback and receiver combo of Rodgers and Goforth. Foss Peters has made some big plays as well for Grand Valley so far this first half. Go forth. Back there, he's in trouble. He scrambles left, breaks through, and he gets through, drops the ball, but falls back on it. Flag comes in late on the play and go for it to try to get some positive yards out of that after almost getting sacked early. Looking to see what we're dealing with here. And a 
it's going to be declined. Looks like maybe it was a hold. But now it's going to be fourth and long. 35 seconds to go here in this uh, first half. And it looks like Coach Dem's content now with running the clock as low as they can here. And that is going to be a, uh, a timeout here. And the third and final one from Grand Valley, 21 and a half seconds to go. They want to punt the ball back to Conneaut. Question is, will Coach uh, Dobrin there be aggressive when it comes to getting the ball back here with uh, a timeout and a little bit of time left? This has definitely been tough sledding for uh, for Grand Valley in the offensive end. They almost had that breakthrough right there before the half ended, but just had that penalty take the wind out of their sails a little bit. And now on a fourth and long, going to get the ball back, most likely to Conneaut. How do you handle that? Coach Dobrin, you have a 20 to nothing lead, 20 points in this quarter for the Spartans. And some penalties have been the cause of a few touchdowns being taken off the board in this first half. A little bit of opening game jitters maybe, and now actually going to be in the shotgun. Looks like that uh, Graham Valley is going to try and go for something here. Go for it, drops back, looking, looking. He's going to throw it, and it is caught. And out for a first down. Big throw from Sammy Goforth. And that was Camden Cottrell with the catch, the senior. His first of the night, and it's a first down. 13 yards. And moving the chains. 14 seconds to go in this first half. Can Grand Valley find a way to get into the end zone? Go forth in the evening now, four for eight for 42 yards, and that interception earlier in this quarter. See if he can respond. 14 seconds, first and 10, ball in the 25 of Conneaut. Go forth in the shotgun. Going to look to the right. He's going to throw it out to Rogers. Rogers met in the backfield. He is grabbed by the face mask, and that's going to be a big penalty against Conneaut. He goes down for a loss of yards, but that face mask is going to be big. Sperlin got there, and there was a couple different Conneaut defenders that managed to get there, but that face mask is going to be a big deal. It's going to keep Grand Valley alive right now. Question is, how far forward is this ball going to go? And normally, yeah, it's about a 15-yard penalty, and that's a big deal for Grand Valley. They're going to have a shot now about 13 yards out. And penalties again. Kind of running in to these teams in big moments. Go for the chance. This is going to be a time, not untimed down. Go for a draw spec, going to throw it up. To Rogers in the end zone, incomplete. Knocked away. What a defensive play by Conneaut. And who else? Number 10, Thaddeus Suya. And it was in the hands of Rogers. He tried to come down. But Huya with great hands in the end zone, didn't make contact until the last possible second, knocked the ball out and saved the touchdown for the Conneaut defense. How about that? It was a solid first half for the Conneaut Spartans there with a great stand at the end and untimed down. And with that, folks, we are going to head to halftime. Your score 20 to nothing. The Conneaut Spartans at home leading the Grand Valley Mustangs when we come back. After this break, we are going to dive into the numbers of the first half, preview your second half, and get ready for more high school football on your CVC TV game of the week. It's a doubleheader. Night one tonight here in Conneaut, 20 to nothing. Again, the Spartans leading the Mustangs back after this.
to show you that heaven's right here in this area. They want you to know that they are not crazy. And they can't believe, can't believe they found someone like you, Spectators and fans, who love their music. It makes them feel like the title, The Love Again.
good quarter fight. Thank you to the American Legion and Canadian Eagles Club for the Penny High School Marching Band. Welcome back into Riccardi Stadium inside Joslin Field in beautiful Conneaut, Ohio. In the score at your halftime break right now, 20 to nothing, the Conneaut Spartans leading the Grand Valley Mustangs here on your CVC TV game of the week. It's a double header tonight being uh, part one of that. What a game it's been at this point. First quarter, both teams scoreless. A couple opportunities uh, for Conneaut. They could not capitalize. And then the second quarter happened, folks. Uh, 20 points put up on the board in that frame uh, by V. Again, Conneaut Spartans leading the way, of course. Wyatt Payne, what a night for this young man. It's just six carries, but he's got 128 yards on the ground and two rushing touchdowns. Both 20 plus yard scampers for score. One little bit of controversy with it, maybe stepped out of bounds, but the refs say no, we say too bad. Touchdown, it counts. And that's what led to Connie to put that lead up. Uh, Max Gleason, the quarterback for the Spartans. Uh, just one pass attempt in that first half, completed for four yards. After that, seven carries, 38 yards, and a touchdown for number seven, the senior quarterback. And then a big play on the defensive end made by who may possibly have the best name in high school football, Thaddeus Huya, with an INT, an interception in the junior. Uh, number 10, uh, defensive back made the interception in that second quarter. Also had a big pass breakup at the end of that first half uh, against uh, Robert Rogers in the end zone, the All Ohio receiver for Grand Valley. Uh, big first half for Thaddeus Huya on the other side. Uh, player breakdown for you. Sammy Goforth up and down uh, first half for him. Started off hop and ended up finishing the first half. Four of eight for 42 yards and an interception. He also had eight carries for 15 yards unofficially in that first half for the Mustangs who had a really tough go of it on the offensive end of the football. Robert Rogers held in check for the most part offensively tonight. Just one catch for nine yards despite being targeted uh, four different times. One of those catches actually went for a touchdown and got called back. One of those targets, I should say. He also has four carries for just five yards. So the goal was to get the ball in his hands a little more often, but just not a lot coming out of it. Uh, Camden Cottrell, four carries, 16 yards, one catch for 13 yards. 
uh, for Grand Valley. And then John Foss Peters, two carries, six yards, two catches for 20 yards for Foss Peters. As a whole, Grand Valley, 84 total yards of offense, 42 pass, 42 rush, two penalties, and they were important. One turnover for Kania. Just four passing yards, but 171 yards on the ground for a total of 175, four penalties and one turnover for the Conneaut Spartans in that first half. We're just under 15 seconds away from kickoff in the second half of your very first game of the CBC TV football game of the week season. Here, high school football being back in beautiful north, northeast Ohio, to the tip of the Ohio Pennsylvania border. And Conneaut uh, gonna get the ball to start this second half after a solid first half. Any tricks up Coach Nims's uh, sleeves here for Grand Valley facing a big hole. Mitch, this is the first CBC game for the Spartans made the jump this past season. This past offseason, I should say, into the Lake Division of the CBC, along with Jefferson and Madison High Schools. Grand Valley, of course, a veteran in the Tough Valley Division, now featuring uh, Kirtland, who actually just moved back from the Chagrin Division after last season. Oh, Dominic Kirtland's been. Grand Valley, it's going to be tough here. A lot of tough divisional opponents. And Conneaut will actually take the ball as we get underway here with the kickoff, the second half, down at about the 27-yard line. And looking to build off a solid first half. His senior quarterback, Max Gleason, joined by a plethora of different playmakers in the backfield. Everyone from Wyatt Payne, Bruce, or I should say Bryce Sperlin making plays throughout that first half as well, all over the place. Bryce also kicks this team too, so has four different positions, how about that? First and 10, ball on the 27-yard line, their own 27 for the Conneaut Spartans on the offense. Looking to keep things moving, try to build up that second quarter. And that was a big second quarter for the boys in blue tonight. End off right side, cutting back to the left, big gain, getting tackled down after a game of about eight. Wyatt Payne picking up where he left off. His seventh carry of the evening, he's now got 136 yards on the ground and those two touchdowns. Don't forget about those, they're important. It's been a big night for Wyatt again, senior running back. Number six, his name being called all over the place. Second and two from their own 35-yard line as we are underway in this third quarter of action. Wasting in the shotgun, two wide left and right. We'll hand back up the middle, big break for Payne. Here we go again, breaking left side, cuts up the field at 50 to the 45, stops, and then goes out of bounds after another solid gain for Payne. How about that? What a run <laughs> for Wyatt Payne all the way down to the 40 yard line of Grand Valley. 25 yards and he can't be stopped tonight, folks. 161 yards on the ground unofficially for Wyatt Payne on just eight carries. And that ground attack is in full effect for the Spartans. Gleason is in the shotgun again. Joined by yours truly, and Wyatt Payne back there having a fantastic evening. This time, Gleason will keep it. He'll break left, showing off the wheel. Stiff arm breaks through to the 25, down to the 21-yard line. Just say 31. Big run there by Gleason. And now eight carries, 47 yards on the ground unofficially for Gleason tonight. He's showing off those wheels. We talked about it in the pregame. Coach Dobrin did say that Max Gleason can run the ball at a high level. He can throw it too, but we haven't had to see him throw the ball too much because of the success on the ground tonight for Kanya. Back in the shotgun again. Gleason will keep it himself. Hole up the middle, big hole running. Steps through, gets down to the 20 and shuffles down maybe a yard or two. More, and oh, they're gonna mark him right at that 20 yard line. Another solid run from Gleason. The gashes are opening up in that Grand Valley defense, and Kanye is taking advantage. 12 more yards. It's now nine for 59 on the night for Gleason. 
And again, and for Grand Valley, the defense just trying to stop the bleeding where they can. Coach Nems just trying to figure out this rush attack from Conneaut. And coming off that eight and three season last year with the Spartans, independent first year in the CVC, as we mentioned. And what a first impression they're making right here on CVC TV tonight. Gleason in the shotgun against two wide right, one wide to the left. He'll draw back. He's going to throw for just the second time this evening. It's up and it is intercepted. It looks like maybe it was down and it was. That was number nine for Grand Valley. Hunter Hayes, the senior. On just the second pass attempt, it was a throw to the end zone and Hunter Hayes comes up with a massive interception. And could that mean momentum is back on the side of Grand Valley. And Cleason, not a lot of pass attempts. That was only number two on the evening. So not a lot of reps with that arm, trying to get it loose and taking a shot for the end zone. Just went up a bit short on the throw. And now Grand Valley is going to take over from their own 20-yard line. Big stand by the defense after a couple of big runs. Can the offense respond now? It's been a tail of the night. Handoff up the middle. Bumbling, stumbling, trying to get some yards out of there. And again, that was number 12 for Grand Valley on the carry, Camden Cottrell. He's had the uh, most success on the ground so far tonight. Five carries, 18 yards. For Cottrell now, second and eight from the 22. Nine minutes to go in this third quarter of action. 20 to nothing, Conneaut in the lead, but Grand Valley has some momentum after that interception in the end zone just moments ago. Go forth. Gonna hand it off up the middle, big hole, big run down the middle of the field of the 40. Still on his feet, pushing forward. The effort from Grand Valley is there down to the 40, 46 yard line, I should say. 22 yard gain. What a run. Twenty-one yard gain right there for Grand Valley. They're moving the chains now, getting close to midfield again. This has been the area they've struggled though. Once they get around this area, maybe just uh, drives have stalled a bit. We're gonna find out what exactly happens. Big throw deep down the field. It's on target. <laughs> and what happened here? They're gonna say, I think that was an interception. And it was. Quarterback to quarterback, why not? Max Gleason with a big play. He throws an interception. He says, ah, short memory. I'll just get one back for you, coach. Big interception from Gleason. And Conneaut retakes the ball. Second INT of the night for Grand Valley and Sammy Goforth. And a big interception from the other quarterback who just threw the interception. Conneaut gets the ball back now on their own 16 yard line. It was one on one coverage down there. With a Jerry Schultz and Gleason, 5'8, went up against 6'4. Schultz and said, too bad, I'm taking it. Now he has the ball in the shotgun. Gleason gonna keep it, roll out to the right, fake the pass. He's gonna run. Here we go. Gleason breaks left side. He's got a big hold on the 40. He's got one man to beat. He gets brought down by Hunter Hayes, the guy who just made the interception on the last drive, but Gleason makes the big run. Huge first down. 33 yard run there for Gleason. That brings him up to 92 yards on 10 carries for the evening. It's been a two headed monster now of Gleason and Payne that have been able to run the ball down the throat of this Grand Valley defense. Gleason making plays now on both sides of the football with his feet on the ground, running the ball, and that interception too to bring the ball back to the Spartans. Eight minutes to go in his third quarter, 20 to nothing. Conneaut in the lead with the ball on their own 47. Hand off up the middle. It was actually a handoff from John Foss Peters. A little bit of a mix up there. Austin Miller on the tackle for Grand Valley. And there is an injured Mustang on the field. And it looks like that uh, 
They beat John Foss Peters and hoping he's able to get up here in a moment, of course. Uh, key piece to this Grand Valley team. And he is, and actually that is not. That is actually number 72 for Grand Valley. That is uh, Kingston Barnes, the freshman. So he is making his way out the field, walking off under his own power. Great to see that. For a solid stop there. Now again, a bit of some trekking here for the Skyneyad offense. Push back a little bit. Second and 13 from their own 47 after the big play from Gleason. Now some negative yards of that last possession. Seven thirty to go in this third quarter. Shotgun two wide left, two wide right. Gleason rolls to the left side. He's going to cut back, and Grand Valley's all over it. 57 for Grand Valley was there. That being Gage Kundrat, the senior, makes the tackle for a loss. A few more yards back on that one. That's going to lead to a third and long, about 15 or so for Conneaut on their own 43-yard line, just under seven minutes to go in this third quarter. And for the first time, really in the past a quarter and a half almost, some adversity for the Conneaut offense. Besides the interception thrown in the end zone last drive, they've been able to roll pretty much down the field here for the last quarter and change. Gleason in the shotgun, he will hand the ball off left side. Here we go, Payne breaks to the left side inside the 50. Still fighting and gets down to the 46-yard line. Wyatt Payne. Trevor Mullen with the tackle there. He's a big playmaker on the defensive end for Grand Valley and stops Payne after a solid run. And roughly another, I want to say like 11 yards or so on that carry. So 172 on the ground today for Wyatt Payne. And again, we still have six and a half minutes to go in this quarter and an entire fourth quarter as well. And there was a penalty that came in late, so take it off the board, folks. We're moving backwards. Looks like it was going to be holding on Conneaut, which will now be their fifth penalty of the ball game, and I'm sure Coach Dobrin is going to be upset about those. There's been a few. One took a touchdown off the board earlier on in the first quarter. Now this move and the team back even further, that holding call. All the way back to their own 35-yard line, so it was a first down. Instead, now it's third and a mile. And roughly almost 25 yards to gain here for Conneaut. Now, if they run the ball, they've been able to average almost 25 yards of carry. So we'll see what happens on that. Gleason actually going to throw it. Looking left, he's going to throw back now. Here is and the man with the plan on the run. This time he catches the ball, breaks up the field, back inside. Wyatt Payne doing everything he can, just could not get that first down on the catch. Now, Wyatt Payne tried and actually gained a lot there, about 17 yards on the catch. Just was not enough. So now it's going to be fourth down and well, roughly about seven or so yards here. 5.36 to go in at this third quarter, and Conneaut, well, they're going to go for it. Why not? With the lead, just past midfield. Try and draw the team off a little bit here. Some movement on that line, but no one jumping. And a timeout going to be called by Coach Dober. And again, try to get that defensive line from Grand Valley to jump off sides. Could not get it. So a timeout called by Conneaut. Up 20 to nothing. Fourth down and six officially coming up here shortly with 5.21 to go in this third quarter. And Grand Valley just kind of playing the cards right a little bit, getting a few breaks with some penalties. And a couple of turnovers in this third quarter have been the highlight so far. The defense is stepping up despite some big plays from both sides uh, of the dial here from both Grand Valley and from Conneaut. But neither team able to capitalize and actually get into the end zone yet. And that's our last pass, by the way, from Gleason was just his third of the evening. That, of course, going for 17 yards to the man that's, I should say, acting like a man at this point, playing as well as he has, Wyatt Payne. And that one catch for 17 yards, but he's still got those eight carries for 161 in those two scores. It has been a eventful evening for the senior. 
he was on your radar before, he's going to start earning some of that credit now. Wyatt Payne making some big plays tonight. He coached over looking for one more. Fourth down and about six yards, 5.21 as you mentioned to go in this third quarter. 20 to nothing, Connie out with the lead and the ball trying to convert a fourth down here. Gleason, it's a pitch back out and it's end around. There is a wide open field. Big play, takes the hit and goes down at about the 34 yard line. How about that? Made some plays on defense. You're into rep on the offensive side. There you go. That is Huya with the carry. All the way down to the 33 yard line, and it is a first down for Kania. Number 10 had the interception earlier in that first half, and now with the big run. Definitely take that, Coach Tobrin. 14 yards on the carry and moving the chains. So here comes Kania at first and 10 on the 33 yard line of Grand Valley. Gleason. Fakes the handoff, gonna keep it himself. Run up the middle, he's met by a pair of Grand Valley defenders before getting stacked up after a gain of maybe one or two. Andrew Soltis on the tackle for Grand Valley. I'm making about 90 yards in the crowd today for Gleason, who's been active running the ball now too on those 13 carries. He has the most of the team of course, Wyatt Payne, eight carries, 161 yards, and two scores unofficially. Gleason has that rushing touchdown to 90 yards on the ground to boot as well. And the shotgun, Gleason dropping back and a hand it off left side. Here we go, rumbling, bumbling. Here comes Payne again. Down to the 29, so give him about three yards. That may have been the shortest carry of the evening, folks. Hunter Hayes in on that tackle. He made the big interception earlier in this quarter for Grand Valley around this area. It's where Gleason decided to lay one out, throw the ball 20 yards down the field, and Hayes made an interception in the end zone, a jump ball and double coverage. See if Coach Dobrin trusts his quarterback again to maybe take a shot. Third and four, 27-yard line of Grand Valley. Conneaut on the move on offense. Just under three and a half minutes to go in this third quarter. Gleason takes the snap. He's going to take it himself. Running left side. He's got some room to run. Cuts back inside. Gleason still on his feet inside of the 15, and that's where he'll get knocked out of bounds. Gleason a solid 12 to 13 yards on that carry, and a Conneaut first down. Joel Montgomery on the tackle. Gleason now eclipsing 100 yards on the ground. And now we got an injury, and it looks like possibly that could be Gleason on the sideline. Did not catch a number there. And of course, this could be a major blow to this team. Talk about Gleason now always play tonight, getting the rhythm to throwing the ball a little bit now at the interception, getting a completion, running for over 100 yards and a touchdown. And again, still uh, down on the left sideline near zone bench. for a number and again that uh, never a sight you want to see in high school football of course we've had a couple players go down today but get right back up this taking a little bit more work on that sideline of course everyone taking the knee of course here it's a CBC TV game of the week here from Conneaut the score right now 20 to nothing those Conneaut Mustangs or I should say the uh, Conneaut Spartans ahead of the Grand Valley Mustangs uh, by three scores and of course, in an injury timeout now as we speak. And again, this could be a devastating blow to this Kanye team if it is Gleason, who I don't see on the field currently. He's been able to get up now. He's limping a little bit, walking on that sideline. That's a great sign right now for Coach Dobrin and obviously hoping that Max is okay. And Gleason's able to walk again on his own power back to the uh, the sideline where the rest of his teammates are talking to coach, giving him the thumbs up or down if he can get back into this game. He's going to take at least one playoff. That probably means we're going to get uh, for Conneaut and uh, Bryce Sperlin in at quarterback. The guy that does everything for the team, kicks, defense, fakes the pitch. He's going to keep it himself, rolling out to the right, going to throw this time. He will dump it off. And there was nowhere to go on that one. Unfortunately, Wyatt Payne got the ball and just couldn't make anything of that. Right now by number 17, 
And uh, Blake Taylor, the sophomore from Grand Valley on the tackle there for the Mustangs. Yeah, Payne usually been able to make magic whenever he touches the ball tonight, but that one was a little bit too much to ask for. And uh, Bryce Sperlin taking the reins here while Max Gleason is attended to on the sideline. Sperlin, hand the ball off. There he goes, Payne up the middle, breaking a tackle, fighting his way forward back to about the 15-yard line. Lucas Mitchell gets there in the tackle for Grand Valley. Hunter Hayes also in on that. Two yards, 10th carry of the night for Payne. 166 yards on the ground for the senior. And he's going to be leaned on, I would imagine, a little more heavily now that Gleason is on that sideline. Have not seen Gleason put his helmet back on yet. He's still standing talking to the coaching staff after that injury scare. But he was able to get up and had a little limp, but was walking back over. He's getting some, uh, some water or Gatorade. Still has a little bit of a visible limp, but looks like he wants to get back in there. I guarantee you he does. Rolling left side, throwing end zone. It's in and out of the hands. Put it right on the numbers. Right there did Bryce Sperlin. Just could not be brought in. And that was uh, number 11 for Connie. Huh? Noah Ham, wide receiver, junior. Just could not squeeze that ball in. Tough angle to try and make that catch over a defender. Great throw. From Sperlin, just a very tough catch to make in that spot. And now it looks like uh, we might be going for a field goal here. How about that? The 14 looking at about a, I want to say around a 31 yard field goal for Sperlin. Snap is good, hole is down, kick is up. It is, can it get there? It will not, wide right, no good. So Grand Valley escapes, not allowing any points. Conniac can't. Make the Mustangs pay for it. And now the offense for Grand Valley coming back out on the field, trying to build something. A minute 34 to go in this third quarter. It's still 20 to nothing in favor of the Spartans. Give credit where credit is due to Mr. Do It Yourself over there. That being Bryce Sperlin. He does pretty much everything, everything for this Conneaut team. Throws the ball, runs the ball, catches it, plays some defense, does the kicking duties too. And coach might need to let him sleep in tomorrow, possibly. <laughs> there we go, first and 10 ball in the 20 for Grand Valley. Hand off left side, got some room to run, and a slip. Oh. That was Foss Peters on the carry for Grand Valley. Looked like he slipped when he turned the corner, and there is another player down. This is one of those things where we've been lucky, we've been fortunate, avoiding that rain for as long as we have to this point. Obviously, at the start of game time is when things really got rough. And it looks like maybe it's just a cramp uh, for the Kania player down there. You know, it was a four yard gain from Foss Peters. He's now got 10 yards on the ground as well as two catches for 20 yards in this ball game. And really, Grand Valley has been able to do kind of what you just saw there. Chunks here or there, but they haven't really put together a solid full drive that's resulted in points, obviously, because that goose egg is still on that scoreboard. Trying to maybe make this the one. It has been tough sliding for sure for that Grand Valley offense. And a little update on Max Gleason who normally plays both ways on offense and defense. He is still on the sideline uh, with his team. Just talking with coaches and staff. Of course, the quarterback for Conneaut. And conditions on the field, not too bad. All things considered, because we have mentioned before, been able to hold off on that rain. Now uh, that player limping off the field here, and that is for Connie. It looks like I want to say number 13. And that is Bryce Berlin. And that could be a big deal. Talk about everything he does for this squad and not really being able to put a lot of weight on that right kick and foot. Hopefully he's going to be all right. I wish him the best as we get back into action now. Second and six, 24-yard line. Grand Valley trying to make something work here on offense. Going to throw left side. It is caught. And then Sauce Peters, and he gets brought down. Big open field tackle. That was a big, big tackle. <laughs> White Payne saying, why not? I'll do it on defense, too. 
Saints will only gain him about two yards there. So now you're looking at a, about third and three as we get under one minute to go in this third quarter. Grand Valley trying to build momentum as we move into the final frame here tonight. Third catch of the evening, by the way, as well uh, for Foss Peters, the junior from Grand Valley. He's got 23 yards receiving on those three catches. No fourth in the shotgun. He's going to roll to his left side looking. He's going to whip it throw. It is caught by Rodgers for a first down. Still pushing, still pushing, and eventually gets brought down by a handful of Conneaut defenders. Down to the 35, he gained him about roughly eight yards, and that's going to be enough. Ethan Osborne in on that tackle originally. Just the second catch of the evening for Robert Rogers. Two for 17 tonight. Two catches, 17 yards for the All Ohio receiver. And with that, it looks like uh, Coach Nims is content with letting this clock run down possibly here to the end. And then Grand Valley kind of puttering around that ball. And yep, they're going to let it go. So we're going to head into the fourth quarter. No score. A carbon copy of the first quarter. No one adds, no one subtracts, but the deficit still three scores for Grand Valley in this matchup. Against Conneaut, the Spartans leading the Mustangs 22-0 as we head into the fourth and final quarter here at Riccardi Stadium inside Jocelyn Field in beautiful Conneaut, Ohio. Mentioned the uh, weather's been able to hold off for the most part this evening. Not a lot of issues there. 70 degrees and in some parts of the city in Conneaut, you may be experiencing a light drizzle here. For the most part, things holding off. A little bit of a breeze, but Again, hoping those conditions stay as good as they can. And now the helmet's back on for Gleason on the sideline. He's getting stretched out by teammates. It looks like uh, Max Gleason could be making a return to the field possibly uh, when the kind of offense possibly comes back. But I'm sure Coach is not going to test it with the defense. And also good to see, too, number 13 for Conneaut. Bryce Sperlin heading back on the field. He is okay. That is awesome to see. So here we go. First and 10, ball on their own 35 yard line. We start the fourth quarter. Grand Valley in a 20 to nothing hole. Mustangs trying to find something on offense. Go forth, goes to the left side. He goes down after a gain of about two to three yards. First carry of the second half, believe it or not, for Sammy Go forth and another injured Spartan on the field. Another cramp it looks like too. Go forth on the night, six of 11, 52 yards, and those two interceptions. He also has nine carries for 18 yards. Yeah, just an unfortunate scenario now for Conneaut running into some cramping. And the good news is a lot of the players have been able to get up and, and walk around and get stretched out and get back on the field. Now the question is again, you know, is it conditions? Again, we've been able to hold off on that rain for the most part, but again, with natural grass fields, you never know. Things can happen. And Grand Valley just trying to build some momentum on the offensive end in this game. And they've had spurts here and there, mainly in the first half, too. They were getting first downs. They actually got a first down in each of their first three drives, but just could not piece more than one together. And that's when the onslaught in that second quarter happened. That's where all the points in this game have been scored in that second frame by Conneaut. Three different rushing touchdowns and a couple extra points. Now that is 54 for Conneaut, the Spartans. And again, looking like it's cramping there, which is... Uh, been a common occurrence here the past few plays as we get back underway. Go forth in the shotgun again, second and seven from his own 38 yard line, 11 and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Go forth, uh, gonna hand it up the middle and get some positive yardage out of there. And 13, that being Foss Peters. And Turner on the tackle there, four. Conneaut, get him about three. And starting to feel a few raindrops possibly make their way into the area. The wind picking up a little bit down on the field as well. Still hanging around 70 degrees here in Conneaut. 
If you enjoy a nice summer breeze, it's a beautiful, beautiful evening. If we can call it fall necessarily, yeah, we're getting there, we're close. We can call this for sure third down, and it's four yards to gain for this Grand Valley offense on their own 41-yard line. Hand off left side, Foss Peters breaks through, gets that first down, rolls through, still on his feet, never get called down, but the whistle does get called eventually. Bryce Sperlin on the tackle, all the way down to the 49-yard line. Now the rain is coming, and here it is. The rain is falling down, and the county out players are jumping up and down, they're excited. <laughs> for the rain, get of about 10 from Ross Peters. He's now got five carries for 23 yards and three catches for 23 yards. So, again, uh, Ross Pe or Foss Peters rather has been the, the man that Grand Valley has been going to with the rain falling now, expecting probably some more runs here too. Go forth under center. Rodgers in motion, he'll take the handoff, breaks right side, goes all the way to the out, and then cuts back in. Positive game for Rodgers, down to uh, about roughly the 44 yard line, give or take. About five yards. That is Huya on the tackle. Rodgers with his first carry officially of this uh, second half. At 10 yards on the ground running for Rodgers. Go forth, hand off left side, big hole, breaking back left and staying on his feet. Is Foss Peters, but he's going to get stacked up right there just before that first down marker. Gain of about four. Foss Peters getting some more work now. Ty Koval on that tackle, of course. The broken tackle all time season record holder from last year. So here we go, third down and short. 8.50 to go in this ball game. Grand Valley trying to get on the board. Go forth, looking out right, he's got a man. He throws it to the right side. It is incomplete through the hands of his receiver. That was Camden Cottrell. He had that first down, but could not make the catch. So big fourth down now for Grand Valley. Cottrell tried so hard to squeeze it and tried to lay out the end as well to make the catch, but just could not get it. And this could be a massive fourth down. Only two yards to gain on the County I 41 yard line for Grand Valley. The offense has not been able to get going. And a timeout gonna be called, it looks like, by Grand Valley. The Mustangs take timeout. Bradley. And the rain starting to come down here. And Kanye held off as long as we could. Just a couple ticks before nine o'clock this evening, but the rain is here. Can't help but wonder maybe if that was a factor, obviously, in that play right there. And from Goforth to Cottrell, just in and out of the hands. Not enough stick him in those gloves to make that catch. Tough angle too with the height of the throw for a guy in Goforth who's had his ups and downs throwing the football tonight. He's six of 12 for 52 yards, has those two interceptions, but both were essentially jump balls, deep balls thrown down the field. Now the question is, can Grand Valley step up in the big time here and make this fourth down conversion, keep their hopes alive to try and come back into this ball game because time is of the essence. Here we go, go forth, hands right side, and what a stop by the Conneaut in Spartans there, that defensive line. That was Cottrell on the carry, just could not break through on a six carry of the night, actually about lost a yard or so, and it's a turnover on downs. Ball goes back to the Spartans, and it's been tough sledding all night long for the Mustangs from Grand Valley on offense. <laughs> in the rain falling down, possibly some lightning in the distance. Don't want to jinx it. 8.37 to go, Kanye has the ball, first and 10 on their own 43 yard line. She's back in the game, Gleason hands off right side. Here comes Payne, Payne breaking through, getting down to midfield into about seven. <laughs> 
Should be a Carl with the tackle. I should say, it's actually Trevor Mullen with the tackle from Grand Valley. With that carry, again, we're actually getting uh, the players getting moved out here. We have a lightweight stoppage. 30 minutes here. The teams will go into the locker room. Oh. Okay, so here we go. There is because there is lightning in the distance. And of course, I said it, so it had to come true, folks. We have a lightning stoppage. Uh, it is coming from the west to our east. That's where the storm is on its way. We held out as long as we possibly could. But with 8.26 to go in this fourth quarter, we do have a stoppage of play. So spectators are going to their cars. Uh, to this point, Shelter, in the game, if this is where it possibly does end, 11 carries, 173 yards and two scores for Wyatt Payne, who had that last carry of this game possibly there. And deep into the fourth quarter, 826, 20 to nothing, Conneaut in the lead, and we have a lightning stoppage here in Conneaut, Ohio at Cardi Stadium inside Joslin Field. So they, so what happens is, folks, you need about a half hour or so from that last lightning strike to be able to resume play. That is the official OHSAA rules. And unfortunately, we keep seeing these lightning strikes happen. So it could be a bit of a delay here with that. And again, in a game that's been all Kanye, in essence. It's the second quarter was the, the key factor, pretty much. That's where all the scoring happened. Uh, both teams had some chances in that third frame, but just couldn't get through and actually had a couple turnovers because of it. And now in the fourth quarter, uh, Kanye was beginning to drive the ball down the field after another uh, again, turnover on downs from the Grand Valley offense. But of course, now with the rain falling and that thunderstorm moving into the area, we are in a bit of a delay, folks. And getting held off as long as we could. Originally, we were supposed to start running here uh, at Riccardi Stadium inside Joslin Field around 8, but it started roughly about 15 minutes ago as we really started seeing some sprinkles fall, and then, of course, the rain starting about 10 minutes ago, and now, of course, the lightning and thunder moving its way through. Uh, rain is forecasted for the area for the foreseeable future. Honestly, through about midnight, there's still at least a chance to have some showers in, but, of course, the thunderstorm uh, moving through now. It's one of the pros and cons of living near Lake Erie, folks. You get the nice breezes, but unfortunately those storms do roll through as well, whether it's obviously here at the tail end of summer or if it's winter too. I don't talk about snowfall to people up here in the Conneaut area. I'm sure you guys are used to hearing that name and that word too much. Still August, I want to bring that up. But nevertheless, again, right now, as it stands, 826 in the fourth quarter to go in this stoppage. And 20 to nothing is the score Conneaut uh, is ahead. And with that, we will take a short break uh, for you guys here to collect to figure out as more strikes continue to come down as far as lighting in the uh, far west.
Welcome back in, folks. Uh, your CVC TV game of the week, a doubleheader this week as we kick off the again, high school football season, and it ended a little bit earlier than expected. And I'm not a running clock, nothing like that. Just well, lightning, unfortunately, <laughs> raining down here all across North Northeast Ohio and Conneaut. Uh, a lightning stoppage leading to the game being called early with 8:40, 8:26, I should say, to go uh, in the fourth quarter. The final score is 20 to nothing tonight. Conneaut wins their CVC conference opener in you know, over the Grand Valley Mustangs. And what a night it was uh, for a pair of the uh, Conneaut's, again, Spartans. And it was a huge game for Max Gleason, of course, a quarterback, two for three, 21 yards throwing. But really the ground game is where he made his calling card tonight. 14 carries, 103 yards on the ground for the senior. And he wasn't the only senior that made big plays tonight. The other, Wyatt Payne, what a game for him. 11 carries, 173 yards, and two scores uh, for Wyatt Payne. Again, he is definitely going to be the player of the game tonight for us. On the other side, of course, Grand Valley, a tough loss. The offense really couldn't get much going throughout the evening, uh, but uh, still some building blocks, and there was uh, opportunity throughout the game, just not much happening uh, for Grand Valley in the offensive side of the ball and not able to put together uh, more than about 125 total yards of offense for the game combined passing and rushing. So, have to wait and see what happens, of course, uh, moving forward with Conneaut and Grand Valley, hopefully with some full games in the future with the weather not being an issue with that. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow night. Of course, we're going to have Beachwood and Orange, that rivalry game, the first game of the season, and the second of our doubleheader this week, the CBC TV game of the week, games of the week essentially because it's part two of our doubleheader tomorrow night. Until then, good night from Conneaut. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you tomorrow.